So what you're looking at right now is the Unico Primo, a hybrid integrated amplifier that's made in Italy that's supposed to give you the harmonically rich sound of tubes while at the same time offering up the power and reliability of a solid state amplifier. And the big question is, does it deliver to goods? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that. Okay, so let's get a couple things out of the way right up front. Number one, this is a gorgeous looking integrated amplifier. Now I know, I know looks are subjective and not all of you are going to agree with my opinion, but really, when you take a step back and you look at its slim profile, when mixed with that classy yet understated aesthetic, I don't know, I think you end up with a product that'll look good in most real world environments. And if you don't like silver, you could always get it in black. Anyway, that's the first thing. The second thing is that I need to emphasize how this is a purist, audiophile solution. It doesn't compact with modern tech features, and that's because this is for the listener who prioritizes sound quality above all else, which would explain the minimalist facade. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the front of the unit now. And as you will see, there's not much to talk about. We have this nice looking wooden logo. Next to that, we have a spot for the IR receiver for our remote control. Off to the side, we have the power switch to turn on and off the unit. Then on the very left hand corner we have this nice input selector knob and then in the middle, oh man, we have one of the creamiest operating volume controls that I've experienced anywhere near this price. The weight, the resistance, it's all perfectly balanced and really other manufacturers take notice because this is how it should be done. I mean it's just mmm, mozzarella. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm going to be doing this throughout the review. Anyway, that's going to be it for the front of the unit. I think the only other thing I need to mention here is that some of you will note how Unison Research has been making the Unico now for the better part of two decades, and you are right. In fact, the unit has only received a couple revisions through its life cycle, but I have no problem with that because, hey, if it ain't broke, there's no need to fix it, right? Anyway, what I'm going to do now is flip this unit around so we can look at the back, then I'll pop the hood so we can look at what's underneath, and then I'll give you my take on how I feel this unit performs. So, let's get to it. Alright, so here's our Primo booty, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. Starting from left to right, on the very left hand side we have an IC inlet for the power cord. Next to that we have our terminals for the speaker wire, which by the way are set up for by wire configuration, if that's your thing. And then next to that we have a bank of RCA inputs and outputs. We have a dedicated tape in and out, which is pretty old school. And then next to that we have a dedicated analog output, which you can use to connect to, say, a subwoofer. North Americans really like connecting subwoofers to things. Ever notice that? Anyway, the only other thing I need to mention here is that my review sample comes with an optional emphasis on optional moving magnet, moving coil phono stage. While I wasn't able to test this out for the review, it's important to note that the Unico Primo does not come shipped with this phono stage. Instead, it's an additional feature which costs you a few hundred dollars more. Speaking of which, it's now time to go over pricing information and to pop the hood of this baby so we can talk about what you get with it. Let's go. All right, so the top is off and I have to say guys, this integrated amplifier looks just as good on the inside as it does on the outside. Try not to look into that one too much. Anyway, let's start off with the hybrid portion of this design, which is this tube. So what you're looking at is an ECC83, otherwise known as a 12AX7 signal tube. And according to Unison Research, this is not a buffer. Instead, it's being used for active preamplification and gain. Once the signal passes through the tube, it goes to a microprocessor, which then governs a MOSFET output stage, which according to Unison Research, never fully turns off once once the unit is powered on, which is a pretty interesting design choice. While this does not make it a Class A amplifier, it's not a conventional Class A B amplifier either. Still, when it comes to power output, what you're getting is 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms, and you know what? I actually don't know what the power output rating is in the forum, so once I learned that, I'll include that in the description box down below. Let's move on and take a closer look at some of the other components, starting with these capacitors. So these are from Italy. They're aluminum electrolytic capacitors totaling 40,000 microfarads, and they're in this beautiful rosso red. There's my Italian accent for you again. And speaking of made in Italy, Allegedly, this toroidal transformer is also sourced from Italy. So pretty cool stuff. I think we covered all the bases here. The only thing left we have to talk about is the price. So in the United States, this unit retails for 1,995 US dollars, which is actually less expensive than what you can get this for in Italy. And that's because the new US distributor is offering this unit consumer direct, just as an experiment to see how that holds. So it's a pretty good price. So now it's time to talk about what you get in terms of performance. Let's go. So as I listened to the Unico Primo, I couldn't help but think about my experiences with the KLH Model 5 speakers. 
Not that the two have the same exact sound, it's just that they seem to be geared towards the same type of listener, a listener that I refer to as the music file, somebody who cares about sound quality, but they would rather spend their time listening to and enjoying music versus analyzing the sound of their system. And in a way, the sound of the Unico Primo reminds me of a stereotypical Italian. It's lively and expressive, yet at the same time, warm and inviting. And if anything, this integrated amplifier does a pretty good job on fulfilling the promise of delivering the benefits of solid state, while at the same time giving you just a touch of that harmonically rich sound that's normally associated with pure tube amplifiers. Of course, whenever you have something that has a very distinct character to it, not everybody is going to like it. For example, if you're looking for a solution that has more of a flat frequency response, then yeah, this is not for you. Nor is it going to be for somebody who wants this roll off and safe sounding presentation. Instead, this is for somebody who doesn't need a whole lot of features and you just want to have a fun time listening to your music. Anyway, that is going to be it for this short summary, so now it's time to dive into those nerdy audiophile details. Let's go. Okay, so let's go ahead and kick this off by going over the treble first, because when I say that this integrated amplifier has a lively and an expressive sound, what I'm really saying is that the treble response on the Unico Primo is a little bit elevated. Now, this is going to be the most difficult part of the review for me to navigate, because how you experience the treble will depend on many variables, to include tube rolling, because remember, you can swap out that stock tube for something else, and that will have an impact on the sound. Something that I'll get to at the very end of this video, but for now, let's focus on what you'll experience when you listen to this unit with the stock tube. And in that scenario, I think most of you will agree that the treble is at the very least a little bit boosted. No, not to the B&W degree, but it is going to be a little elevated. And with that comes the good and the bad. So on the good side, obviously this voicing allows you to hear detail effortlessly. It'll make it sound great at low listening volumes and give you that airy and spacious sound that a lot of audiophiles love. And plus one could argue that it sounds more authentic with a wider variety of music. Not only is it just interesting to listen to, but let's face it, real live instruments, brass, the hi-hat on a drum kit, electric guitars, they don't sound polite. There's real energy and grit to the sound, and the Unico Primo captures that in a very convincing way, yet it doesn't do it in a very bright and overly aggressive way. In fact, even when it has to handle poorly recorded material, it doesn't give you that transistory response of handling it. Instead, it gives you this kind of rounded sound to where you know that you're listening to a poor recording, but it doesn't sound grating to your ears. Now, what's the downside then? Well, the downside is because it has this voicing, it's not going to lend itself well to every speaker you can think of. It's not a jack of all trades solution. So if you already own a set of lively sounding speakers, like say from Bowers and Wilkins or Monitor Audio, then this may not be a great match for you. It just may be too much of a good thing. Instead, in my experience, I feel like it's more ideal for speakers that have more of a neutral and or slightly rolled off high frequency response, like say Harbeth, Bacard Audio, Dynaudio's Evoke series, or the Contour Eyes. Speakers like that make for a wonderful match with this integrated amplifier. Anyways, that is it for the treble. Let's move on and talk about the mid-range. So the mid-range sounds a lot cleaner than you may expect. I mean, yes, it does have some warmth to the sound and it definitely has a nice sense of scale and body to the presentation, but it doesn't sound overly warm and saturated. I think when a lot of people see that tube, that's what they would expect out of the mid-range and that's not what you get. Instead, it's pretty clear and pretty close to linear, which is what I think a good mid-range presentation should be. Moving on, let's talk about the bass. The the bass is where you get the color, that's where you get the warmth from because there is going to be a little bit of a boost in the bass response. But I like what they've done here, they've struck a really good balance between bass that's really strong, especially for an integrated size, while at the same time offering you really good detail and clarity. In fact, I'm impressed with how tonally fun it is to listen to. I wouldn't say accurate, but it's definitely a lot of fun and I would rather take something that has really good tone and a lot of weight behind it versus something that's say the quickest bass in the world but kind of dry in its delivery. Moving on, let's talk about imaging. This is going to be a huge strong suit for the Unico Primo because not only does it give you great spatial separation with everything that you're listening to within a recording, but the soundstage has depth and layering to it that's normally reserved for much more expensive components. And then lastly, let's talk about dynamic output. So dynamic output's going to be okay. Look, it's not like a class D amplifier in this range to where you get this huge shift between a lot of energy and then going between that 
that and a quiet passage. The Unico Primo doesn't quite do that, but it handles dynamic passages well enough to where I don't think too many people would complain about it. Anyway, that is pretty much it for the performance. I'm at the end, so I'm already losing my mind a little bit. I think the only other thing I need to mention here is that the Unico Primo, because of its size and because it doesn't generate a whole lot of heat, it's a pretty easy integrated amplifier to work with. So as long as you can give it enough room to have at least a little bit of ventilation, you should be good to go for safe operation. So all in all, it's a really good little integrated amplifier, but it's definitely not going to be for everybody. So let's go over some of the caveats now. Okay, so as is the case with pretty much every hi-fi component, it's not all roses and sunshine for the Unico Primo. It definitely has some issues, so let's go ahead and talk about them now. Starting with the first, it has no headphone output. So if you're somebody who listens to speakers as well as headphones, then you're a little SOL with this solution. Moving on, this is not for somebody who likes to listen at loud volume. So if you're trying to recreate the sound of a rock concert inside your living space, then there will be better solutions out there for you for the same amount of money. Speaking Speaking of which, once you take the Unico Primo to its power limitations, the sound becomes bright, aggressive, and just not very pleasant to listen to. Moving on, because it has a lively character, or at least it does with the stock tube, that means it's not going to pair up well to every loudspeaker you can think of. In fact, it's not really a good match for speakers that already have a forward presentation, a good example being speakers from Bowers & Wilkins or Monitor Audio. Instead, it sounds best with speakers that have more of a linear presentation and or something that has maybe even a slight roll off in the top end. Moving on, because this unit is made in Italy in small batches, it's not always going to be available to buy. In fact, you may have to wait a little bit in order for your unit to be built and then shipped to you. And then lastly, even though those of us in the United States enjoy a really good price on this unit, those of you in other parts of the world will have to pay a higher price and that impacts the value proposition of this integrated amplifier. Anyway, that is it for the caveat, so let's go ahead and provide some context to all of these words by going over a few comparisons. Okay, so let's kick this off by going over how the Unico Primo stacks up to a very popular integrated amplifier, the Parasound Halo Hint 6. And what makes this comparison so interesting is that while both of these components are geared towards audiophiles, they are very different products. For example, the Unico Primo is a purest audiophile solution. It's for somebody who knows what they want in terms of sound quality. It's for somebody who doesn't care about built-in features. And all you know is that you want the best sound that you can possibly get for the money. Whereas the Hint 6, it's designed to have a broader appearance appeal, its voice and way to pair up well to a wide variety of speakers, while at the same time offering up a lot of power and features in one chassis. But you do pay for that, hence why the Hint 6 retails for just under $3,000 and the Unico Primo retails for just under $2,000. And the big question is, how do they compare to one another in terms of sound quality? Well, first let's start off with the advantages of the Hint 6. Overall, when you compare these two side by side, you'll notice that the Hint 6 will have a more balanced sounding presentation, and if anything, will take on a slightly warmer and darker tonal character. Now, the big difference here, though, is going to be the treble. The treble is not as lively or as pronounced on the Hint 6, and this allows it to have more of an even-keeled presentation, which in turn will allow it to pair up well to, well, pretty much any loudspeaker that you can think of. And then there's going to be the power advantage. The Hint 6 is definitely more powerful at 180 watts per channel into 8 ohms versus the Unico's 80 watts per channel into 8 ohms. Now, to be honest, in a real world environment and on average speakers, average listening volumes, you're not going to be able to tell a big difference between the two. It's only when you crank the volume of both of them and you listen to them at their limits, which is when you get to experience those differences. The Hint 6 in that situation will have a bit more power on tap and it sounds more composed at its limits, whereas the Unico Primo definitely doesn't sound as powerful and its presentation goes sideways. It starts to sound very very bright once you reach its power limitations. Otherwise, the Hint 6 is that jack of all trades solution. So the big question is then, what does the Unico Primo bring to the table? Well, as mentioned before, this is an integrated amplifier with character. It has a lively presentation, which allows it to sound a little bit more lifelike in the sense of it being able to capture the raw energy of live sound. And plus, this allows it to sound a little bit more expressive at lower listening volumes. And when it comes to clarity, 
Overall, the Unico Primo is going to have better clarity pretty much from top to bottom. The treble, even though it's more forward, is a bit more refined. And then the mid-range is going to sound just a little bit cleaner, if not even a little bit more lifelike, thanks to some extra body and dimension. And then the bass, in my opinion, is going to sound just a little bit more tuneful. It's not going to be a big difference, but it is noticeable. But the biggest difference, in my opinion, is going to be the spatial separation and layering within the soundstage, which is notably deeper and just notably better than what you get with the Hint 6. So ultimately, if you know what kind of sound it is you're going for, I think the Unico Primo offers up better sound quality than the Hint 6. However, the Hint 6 is still the better jack-of-all-trades solution, and I think it's still the better option for somebody who doesn't really know what it is they're looking for. You just want something that'll just work. As always, it's up to you to decide which solution is best for you. Now, before we move on, I have to give a quick shout out to the Hint 6 because this is the last time that it will be featured at Zero Fidelity. I've had it for a couple years now, and after this review, it's going to go back to Parasound. So thanks to Parasound for letting me hang on to it for so long. It's been a fun journey, but now it's time for it to move on to its next phase in life. So now it's time to move on and to talk about some tougher competition for the Unico Primo. Okay, now this is tough competition. Beneath the Unico Primo is the Musical Fidelity M6SI. Not only is this Musical Fidelity's best-selling integrated amplifier, it's also another purest audiophile solution, albeit one that's more expensive at $2,700. So, how does the little Unico hold up? Well, first let's talk about the advantages of the M6SI. For starters, it is a lot more powerful, offering up 220 watts per channel into 8 ohms, and make no mistake, you can absolutely hear the difference. Now don't get me wrong, while the Unico's power is definitely serviceable, the Musical Fidelity has no problems driving just about any loudspeaker you can think of, while at the same time playing at loud volumes without strain. And plus, this additional power also gives the Musical Fidelity a big advantage when it comes to raw, dynamic output. Overall, the Musical Fidelity is also going to be the more neutral sounding piece, with the only deviations from neutrality occurring ever so slightly within the treble and bass. And then on top of that, the clarity within the treble, the mid-range, the bass is pretty much on par with the Unico, so what you're ultimately getting is a more powerful, more dynamic, and a more linear sounding experience. Which brings up the big question, what advantage does the Unico have then? Well, it's pretty much the same story as before. What the Unico lacks in power, it makes up for with its more expressive sound and character. You have the superior layering and depth within the sound stage. You have a more realistic tonal portrayal of the mid-range and really a sound as a whole and plus I noticed that it sounds less like a typical transistor amp especially when it's tasked to handle poorly recorded material. The musical fidelity whenever a recording's bright or thin can sound rather unpleasant and revealing whereas the Primo even though it's more lively it doesn't have that typical solid state way of handling poor recordings and that's when the tube really kicks in and adds this pleasant harmonic tone to an experience that would otherwise be honestly mildly unpleasant. Still, when you get right down to it, this is a pretty even matchup. In fact, I don't mind saying, I think people would be split 50-50 on which solution they'd prefer for themselves, which, if anything, is a testament to the Unico Primo given the price difference. Anyway, that is going to be it for the comparison, so let's go ahead and wrap up this review. What else can I say guys? When you get right down to it, what you're getting with the Unico Primo is a compact, well-made, good-looking integrated amplifier that offers up really good performance for the money. In fact, I'll even go so far as to call it a value, or at least it is for those of us in the United States, because what you're getting is an integrated amplifier that costs a little bit less than $2,000 that can deliver the kind of performance that you would expect from something that costs as much as $3,000. In fact, in my experience, it took my Luxman 550 to beat it out in pretty much every way and even then I had to question whether or not the gain in performance was worth literally over twice the price. I don't know, a question for the philosophers. All I know is that I am putting my money where my mouth is on this one. I am going to keep the review sample because not only does it sound great on my Harbeth P3 ESRs, but I think it'll be a valuable reference point for something in this price class from this point onwards. Anyway, that is going to be it for this review. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Enjoy the music and until next time, peace. Okay, so as a bonus to this review, let's go ahead and talk about tube rolling. 
So one of the cool things about owning a hi-fi component with tubes is that it allows you to manipulate the sound to taste. All you have to do is replace the stock tube with something else and that gives you the opportunity to change the sound to something that may be more to your preference. And while this rarely results in something better in the overall sense, every once in a while you will come across a tube that'll take the presentation you like and then make it better in pretty much every way. That happened to me with the Unico Primo and I wanted to share that experience with you guys. Now before I begin I need to note that this section is brought to you by TJ the Stereo Bargain File. He reviews hi-fi gear with the Kentucky Swing on YouTube and I would definitely encourage you to check him out. Now, he sent me this t-shirt as well as this Gold Lion AT7 signal tube, which is compatible with the ECC83 and 12AX7 tube set. It's just going to be a little bit lower gain, but otherwise it's a great match. And I noticed what it does to this unit is that it takes what's so good about the Unico Primo and not only does it make it better, it also addresses the only thing about its presentation that may turn off some people, which is that lively presentation. Now, don't get me wrong, with the Gold Lion in place, the Unico Primo is still going to have a slight slightly lively sound, only now it's not going to be as pronounced and in fact the treble is going to be smoother, more refined, and just a little bit easier on your ears. And then the mid-range and bass, while it has the same general character, everything is going to sound a little bit cleaner. Separation is going to be even better as if the Unico Primo needed any more help in that regard. And overall, you're getting what you like so much about the Primo, only it's better. And here's the best part. The Gold Lion only costs around $36 or $37. So if you're somebody who has a Unico Primo or if you're considering it, I would definitely encourage you to spend the extra money. Go with this Gold Lion because I have a pretty good feeling that you're going to enjoy what you hear. Anyway, that is going to be it for this incredibly long video. As always, thanks for watching and until next time, guys, peace.